So we find a little red curly cord somewhere between Mount Takara and Signal Mountain. It's mine, I want to buy it. So. I am chilling out by myself here in the parking lot for Moraine Lake, which is right about 14 kilometers or so uh, away from Lake Louise, just south of there. What's hilarious is that this parking lot is full. <laughs> it's almost funny. So I stayed at the Lake Louise campground last night. I set up my alarm clock for 4.15 and I basically had everything in the Jeep and all I had to do, get dressed, hop in the vehicle and drive out here. And then quickly realized that there's at least, there was four or five vehicles ahead of me that I caught up with. There was like four or five vehicles in behind me. Just, and then we ended up all packed in together and there was just one massive convoy, which was quite funny. There was like 10 cars coming in here at like before 4.30 in the morning. So it was probably like 4.20 when we we're driving in here a quarter of the parking lot uh, was full. The front portion. Mind you, the 10 cars that were in the convoy kind of made that quarter, but like, you have to be willing to come here super early. And if you're gonna hike, you don't really have a choice to come here super early because you're not gonna come here at noon on a hike that's like 10, 15, 20 kilometers. The Wake Chemna Pass Trail. So you guys will have seen this by now, but Heather and I, we decided to go on the Paradise Valley and we went all the way to the end of the valley. So we, we went walked all the way to the Continental Divide from the Paradise Valley. So we passed Fairview Mountain on the south, Lake Annette on the north, and we went all the way to the Giant Steps and went all the way to that little horseshoe lake all the way to the end. And that was a 13 hour day. So today, this pass here, according to the all trails, it's only 17 and a half kilometers. I say only because when I did the other valley at the Giant Steps, we did 27-ish kilometers that day. I don't even know exactly how I'm guesstimating because my phone died. That's how long we were out. We're going to head out to Wachemna Pass. Uh, you basically walk around Moraine Lake. And then you kind of weasel your way west and then you hit kind of a switchback that hits on top of a ridge and then that ridge you kind of follow it all the way down but i'm going to be passing the eiffel tower and then the um, wastek mountain and then there's a little tiny lake on the way there eiffel lake oh there you go so you pass eiffel lake which i heard that there's larches all over eiffel lake as well go all the way to the end of the pass and then you can kind of switch back. But since it's pitch black right now and the sun's not even coming up for another two hours, I really won't be able to film anything on the way out. I might be able to get some good sunrise shots either way. So I figured I'd do my intro right in the Jeep to let you guys know what's going on. I will see you guys on the Wekchemna Pass Trail. Peace. The crazy goals I set for myself here, just to hopefully you guys at home enjoy this, because this was a tough grunt. I mathematically, I had it all right down pat, but I didn't foresee this, a lot of rocks. I hope that anybody that watches these videos kind of appreciates the uh, crazy dedication some people have to have to get good content and great 
video and pictures of these really remote areas. To get here for sunrise required to me to do a little bit of jogging and which was fine until I came across. I guess you can't really tell, but uh, I'm chucking down boulders here just to get to this uh, gorgeous little lake, which is called Eiffel Lake. And because it's right beside Eiffel Tower, which is in behind me right over there. Uh, doesn't really look like the French Eiffel Tower, but you know, we'll take it with a grain of salt there. It's wide at the bottom and pointy at top, so you know, close enough. This seems like a good fucking spot. Huh. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is Eiffel Lake. At sunrise, during large season. <laughs> water you see in this lake will eventually slowly but will eventually land up in the Arctic Ocean everything that's in behind that mountain range right here all straight west all the water that falls over on that side will land up in the Pacific Ocean hence the Continental Divide in Alberta and BC the Continental Divide basically is the border for a long period of time. I am going to put this on a time lapse so you guys can enjoy the sunrise. Chim the Pass let you guys know that I don't really see a trail up there and there's no trees. So it's nothing that you can't just pick whatever you want for a route. Doing exercises like this is actually really good practicing picking routes when you're going up uh, on trails and mountains like that. So this is kind of like a rock bed right here. So yeah, I think it comes down. There's another little pond over there. I don't know where this water's coming from coming from the mountains obviously and now it comes over here and it kind of eroded all of this into like a rocky beach and then there's another little a bigger lake actually right over here I'll show you guys this nice little view over here this is breathtaking I kind of want to go for a little swim it's probably cold I would need some uh, cold detergent <laughs> peace out guys Look 
that green moss, eh? This stuff is kind of cool. I've seen this only at super high, super high elevations. And some of it, especially when the sun is shining like this, it's super bright green. It's crazy. Went Chemna Pass here. That's in behind me right there. So it's, it's not even that bad, even from over here. I mean, it is steep, but I mean, you can just pick a trail wherever you want to go. You'll get there. You might want to start on this side and slowly weasel your way back and forth, back and forth, moving more that way. Um. Well, holy moly, I found a big rock on top of this ridge. I took a good like 10 minute nap. I didn't fall asleep, but it was just close my eyes and to have your body just completely rest and do nothing for uh, even 10 minutes. Sometimes it's all you need. Um, I haven't looked at the top of the pass yet. So this, I'm on top of the uh, Wank Chemna Pass. coming back down this mountain here and oftentimes in the fall uh, there's a lot of the snow that'll stick and stay at high elevations and if you still want to be hiking during those times of year uh, you might have to carry different gear you know to allow you to get to the top of the mountains and back down safely so these are micro spikes they're dirt cheap you can get them for like 20 bucks on Amazon I bought like four pairs and I often carry two pairs in case one busts or I'm with a friend or something like that. So, so now I'm you're coming down this ridge like this here, right? And then it's, it's nice. And then you'll hit like a big patch of snow. And sometimes you're like, well, shoot. Now, if I want to avoid this, I need to go like way the hell over there. And if you come down over here, you'll see it's just snow, 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 snow. I'm only doing this because I came up this way and it worked very well. So I'm gonna go down the same way. And basically what we're gonna do with the uh, micro cleats here, we're just gonna follow the path along and we're gonna be line across and then we're gonna come back down and that'll save us from having to do this big loop. Cause all we wanna do is just get down to where there's no snow. And, and you know what, just for safety's sake and balance, um, I never thought I was gonna need it, but uh, I'm just gonna take out one of my poles and I'm gonna use one as balance, mainly because I wanna film and I wanna hold the camera in one hand so I'll need balance on the other. The main thing that's nice with the pole is to actually have, to be able to judge how deep the snow is. Uh, you'll have, hit certain coulées where it's just like, oh, like this is super, super steep, right? So last week I was at Jasper and they got a ton of snow and I basically had to hike up like this for some of some of the trails. It was about half the trails that were like this. The key to this is to only move one foot at a time because that's how you're gonna trigger a slide here. See, I'm, my down foot here is kind of sliding a bit. You can see these little pellets of snow rolling down, making a little uh, avalanche Oreos. <laughs> And 
And this is where the pole comes in handy. You kind of want to check, see right here. My pole, yeah, just went down a foot. Here it went down an inch. I had some spots in Jasper last week where my pole went down all the way to that red chunk there. So there was like three feet of snow in certain parts. It didn't look it, but as soon as you got there, yeah. So now, uh, we did that whole descent. And now we gotta take these things off your feet because if I'm walking on these big rocks like this, I'm definitely gonna wreck these things. You can't do that for too long. So, and then I know that there's no snow for the rest of it. So yeah, cool. Hopefully this technique helps out whoever's uh, trying to get up to summits and scrambles and little hikes like that. Uh, these micro spikes are one of the most handy things you can keep in your backpack. As I was coming back, uh, I seen Wastek Mountain, which is in behind me over there. And I thought, hey, I should go try to see if I can get to the top of that. I'm happy that I came up here because this is Eiffel Tower that's in behind me over there. There's a little bit of a scree that you could climb up there. And if you're able to get up there, I think that you might be able to go around the peak and get to the other side. And on the other side, there's a trail that goes all the way back down to Large Valley. And I was really contemplating doing that, but I'm not confident that I can get around the front end of the mountain. And if I get there, I'm kind of committed. Since I've never seen the other side, I just figured I'd play it safe. So I don't want to take any overextending risks so I decided to stay put. But maybe next time, next year, if I come back, I might go up the Eiffel Tower, and then on the way back, I'd be like, you know what, let's come back this way and come down. And at least we know there's a loop that you can actually come down from there. So we're gonna go check out the pass, and I'm gonna go show you what's on the other side. I've seen what's on the other side of that, but I wanna come and check out what vantage point it gives you. Sometimes you look at a little hill and it doesn't seem like that big of a hill. This one actually had a path more towards the Eiffel Tower side, but I didn't see it until I almost got to the top. And I was just like walking on boulders and that's really hard on your feet because there's no flat surface to even put your, so you're always on your toes. I got to the top of the Wastek Pass and I think I decided that I'm not going to go up to Wastek Mountain, but if you do, um, that's where you go. You can come up here, and I think that ridge here, that gives you, that's probably the least steep part. So what's in behind me here, you just follow the ridge all the way down here. I think that's pretty much your best. But what's really cool here is that on the other side of uh, Wastek Mountain, This whole pass is covered in snow. Crazy. Eiffel Tower has quite the view on this side, actually. I kind of like it. I see tracks that I don't like. They're not human tracks. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys the view here first. Wastek Pass. This is the other side. And That was loud. Well, there was a big chunk of snow or ice that fell off. Those are, those are mountains that we've seen and that little tiny lake at the far back over there, uh, Heather and I have been down there before and we actually had to cross that lake. And the giant steps, there's like a very, very pretty meadow down there. It's gorgeous, gorgeous but there's like a million different streams that kind of opens up. And then, 
if you follow that meadow and you keep going, you'll find the giant steps, which is kind of like in that little wooded zone down there. Something else you could also do is that you could go down this way and then you can go all the way to the back. You can go up the Sentinel, Sentinel's Pass and you can come all the way back up if you really wanted to. That could be, uh, I could have done that today if I would have chose not to do the White Chemna Pass. So I'm checking out all the passes here, basically is what's going on. And I'm gonna show you guys something that's down over here. When I seen these at first, I just assumed they were footprints that somebody had came through the pass and came down. And then when I'm looking at them closely, I was like, no, these are bear tracks and they're kind of small. So this is probably like a cub. You can see one there that's dug in. Yeah, little tiny tracks, which is actually going in the direction that I'm going. So general rule of thumb, if you come across bear prints like that, uh, just get out of there. <laughs> you know, you don't need to stick around. Just uh, get out of there and forget that you've seen the prints, basically. Which is kind of crazy that I don't know why the bears would come all the way up to here. I guess it's the easiest way, it's a pass, it's the easiest way to get into the other valley. It seems, just seems very difficult for them to get up here and down. Yeah, so this was uh, Wastik Pass which links the Giant Steps Valley to the Moraine Lake and uh, Point Chemna Pass. Yeah. So yeah, peace out everybody.